bad shit. It was. Yeah. How about it? I'm a, I'm a day older now. How old are you now? Um, How old are you now? Too old for this shit. <laughs> That's an appropriate answer. Yeah. At least I'm getting there. Am I, am I encroaching on your drawing down there? I can move stuff. No, oh, no, no, no. Uh, I uh, got that right there. That's the most he's probably going to stick out in front of your drawing. Gotcha. Also, I let the... Uh, Show starts soon. Logo will go a little bit longer than I should have. My mistake. But we're in business. Oh no! That's all right. Did you, is it just now that it's going away? Yeah, but look at <laughs> what's Surprise. on. Look at what's on the screen. They didn't miss Close. that much. No, hey, they didn't miss a whole lot. I'm just missing all the fun. It's like those how to draw books. It just skips all the steps and gives you the final <laughs> yeah. product. I feel that way. Like every, t it's still like such a present image in my head where like it's like step how to draw an owl step one yeah, draw that's... a circle step two draw the fucking owl draw the rest Cause... of the owl because <laughs> <laughs> i saw i saw like somebody's processes like their process steps on like instagram i want to say or i want to say art station or something like that but uh it like it, it, it never fails it's every time where it shows the first step they're like laying down real basic colors they have like a sketch that they're coloring under and then like they they throw down some like rough shading areas and then the next step looks like a complete picture all of a sudden they're just like every other step is adding like incremental lighting changes that don't make it like too much of a difference each it's just like why wouldn't you show it in between they got in the zone and they forgot to keep tracking their progress and then they're like oh shit uh now do this thing that i did that took me six hours and then you know you're done it, it goes, just goes to show you how important proper shading is it makes it makes a world of difference when uh i think Probably ultimately the people who made the how to draw books knew that everybody was the kids are just tracing the final product There's not a lot yeah. of there's not well, a I lot think of they're also like kids are stupid. Yeah, Let's just put, you know put some boilerplate bullshit down and you know, Give it to some kids Yeah, let's let's do a drawing That I'm only gonna put in a couple of the lines and then just some numbers that are tiny And kids have to fill in the rest of the lines. There you go. You're trying to draw on I uh, I was actually wondering the other day about like those like how to draw books. Like I remember when I was a kid, like on Nickelodeon, they had like here's how our animators draw SpongeBob, and he showed like a step by step. Like first we draw this line, yeah, and then we draw, the, and he shows you like how to draw like the perfect three quarters view of SpongeBob. And I was always and like you know you got people who are just like oh I couldn't draw, I could never, I, I would never be able to draw, and like. The answer is always you just have to practice a bunch and then mm -hmm. you can draw. Yeah, well, That's you how think it I works. came out of the womb fucking as Rembrandt? No. You're not even Rembrandt now. Yeah, I'm <laughs> far from it, actually. <laughs> but, uh, it's, uh, so, like, I've always wondered if, like, people who kind of have that mindset where they're just like, oh, I can't draw, like, I, I just, I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, do you think, like, they look at those how to draw books and they think, like, maybe every, like, th that's the only way people. <laughs> learn how to do that shit is they're just like okay so step one i think when people say of... i can't do i couldn't do that they're basically saying i'm not i'm not going to take the time to learn in the same yeah. way that i might say I, I i'm trying to think of a quick example that's something that i would love to be able to do but i can tell you right now bef from now until the time i die i'm not going to sit down and practice <laughs> whatever it is yeah. i don't know playing the yeah, trombone I'm sure. Yeah, an instrument was basically uh, my I just couldn't play the trombone because, God, I couldn't sit down and practice the trombone. <laughs> it's like ultimately what Two I'm hours saying. a day. Yeah. <laughs> Not gonna happen. No. You probably couldn't play me to, pay me to play the trombone. <laughs> play the I will pay you uh, $20 a week to play the trombone. And then in a few years, you can pay off the trombone. <laughs> ah, there we go. Boom. That's how they get you. Speaking of brass instruments or woodwinds, depending on the way the way the reed is, um, what like worst instruments to decide to pick up, in my opinion, are the brass and the woodwinds? Because, like, have you ever seen like that pictures, uh, like those pictures of like Dizzy Gillespie's cheeks? Yeah. I haven't. Wynton Marsalis when he's blowing on a saxophone. 
Looks like you're putting some serious strain on your face there. Like you're stretching them so, out. Like the picture. The pictures I'm referring to, like, basically, like, these dudes are blowing into their trumpets or, uh, whatever that dude's instrument that Zach said, uh, but, like, their cheeks are, like, so puffed up because, like, they've, uh, like, their cheeks have just stretched out over years of just, like, blowing as hard as I can, yeah. Enough. But, like, th so, like, whenever you're playing, like, a trumpet or something like that, you gotta, like, purse your lips, you gotta make your cheeks real big, and you gotta, like, push it out, like, the air, like just, Squidward trying to fucking blow a bubble at the beginning of that episode. I literally like, just watched that episode <laughs> two days ago. <laughs> two days ago. Technique. Um. So like, that's how you gotta play a trumpet, and yeah. that's just like the I hate that feeling. Like I don't like that. <laughs> and you don't want to stretch your face. No, I don't. I feel like, like if they made an I instrument look... that you have to like yank on your earlobes to play. It's like, you right. see some of like, the earlobes down to their feet, the and they're like, oh, you must play. Like, let's just make a, a piano that it, it tweaks <laughs> your nipples every single time you press a key. That's like, it tweaks left if you want to go down in pitch. It's like a theremin. You can tell. You like, your hand moving up and down, it's like tweaking. You can tell somebody's an accomplished musician if their nipples are dragging on the ground. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do, do you got a... long and chewed up. Oh, man. <laughs> years. I'm um, so Nipple. I just love music. What can I say? I'm so sorry, sir. Do you do you jog a lot? No, I've got <laughs> Theremin's nipple. <laughs> I don't Come even want to. I don't even want to try to picture what that instrument would look like. It's like uh, it's got. I imagine like clampy like arms, like they you see in like '50s robots, you know. Okay. Yeah, if we're actually going what? into this. Old Turns your nipples nipple into the guitar piano. strings. I imagine it would look like a medieval torture device. I'm sure, yeah, there's not many ways you can, it's, you know, it is a medieval torture device. Have an device. instrument that plays your nipples? Exactly. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a more clever way of saying it, but what's the point? It's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. As Shakespeare once said, uh... Weenus. Yeah. No, he said <laughs> I'm pretty sure Shakespeare came up with it is what it is, too. Um, yeah, I think so. I think in the end of oh, the no, tempest, it's just, he's like, you know, sucks to suck, it is what it is. You know what else he came up with? Um, like right. Romeo and Juliet. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yep, yeah, so. I have no idea. Checkmate. This is, this is, that's right, Captain Sheepy, it's bomb time. And when you do bomb time, you learn such fun facts as what a weenus is and, uh, and what a weenus isn't. <laughs> Han Solo shot first. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what the fuck? You're in goddamn, what, Sicily or whatever? Wait, I don't know. Verona? Bippity boppity. Eh, that's boozy. Hey, Mikey, gaga goo. Um. You know, Racism. <laughs> I, had a, I had a good one for the uh, theremin that plays your nipples, but I can't remember it. But, <laughs> we're past that. Uh, yeah, I like to I like to go back to topics that were are definitely dead and just try and like get my last word in on those. You know, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, it's... And while we're talking about World War II, I just think uh, that Churchill guy. You know, I I personally Kurt. think the the sequel wasn't as good. <laughs> yeah. Had better uh, better bad guys. Like yeah, better that's true. They, that, just like the, they, they the costume design was super evil looking. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, super evil, like red and black, like leather and Jesus. like chrome, and like, just like just like all the things that look evil. Evil maniacs, masters of fashion. <laughs> Maybe master there's... race, master of fashion. <laughs> they're they're just trying to. I'm canceled. <laughs> Go hang out with Alfred. You're done. Yeah, that's right, Zach. Go hang out in the penalty box with Alfred. Oh, okay. They're all rethinking their careers. And planning a comeback. Woo! So anything new with you fine folks? Um, uh, I haven't left the house in a long time. I don't blame you. I wouldn't if I didn't have to go to work. Yeah. Yeah, I go to work. That sucks. We're like, yeah, they're not. All the restaurants and bars, one by one, are starting to have positive cases around here. Wow. 
That's pretty fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I work at one and that, and Ours hasn't had a positive case, but it's only a matter good, of time. No reason to, you know, no reason to encourage a ticking clock or anything like that. Right. Well, yeah, I, I go to work to try and social distance, but other than that, I hate work, so, you know. Right. Wee. I work at a restaurant, so it's like, the only thing you can do is make people, like, wear masks until they get to their table, and then they take them off, because you have to. And then, yeah, most people don't even wear them to the table, and our managers are like, now, now, employees, you're not the mask police, so. <laughs> that shit. It's like, it's like, yeah, okay, I agree. To some degree with that statement, but you, the managers, can be. Yeah, yeah. You're the manager. It's not my place, but it is. What else are you here for? It is your place, so please protect your employees. The manager ever says that, just cough right on your manager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't have it yet, so it's not. doesn't mean anything. I know, but it's all a matter of. I'll wait till I get it when I, when I inevitably do, <laughs> and then I'll get them. <laughs> I'm go. coming! Yeah. I, uh. I haven't been doing much. I've been working, drawing when I can, and uh, play some video games. But other than that, nice. you know, been playing anything good? I picked up Borderlands Three yesterday. Ah, well, we not still yesterday. Haven't I started it. playing it yesterday. He's all caught up. Oh, yeah, wow. I'm already caught up. To you Wait, yeah, yet. we need to finish it. I forgot. I keep forgetting. <laughs> I'm being most the gunner. Nice. He's not doing any of the side missions, that's why he's already like yeah. where we are. Oh, it's so annoying. Okay, so I I, I already pulled me in this, but I need to Yeah, he, he doesn't say... stop saying that he has these problems with Okay, it. so <laughs> I really have never played a game that I hated so much at the same time and loved so much at the same time. As Borderlands three? Yeah. That's okay. It is, I can see that. It is super fun. Like the gunplay is just I I, I love it. I love big weighty guns and Ragdoll and bandits across the map with right. a loud bang. Um, there's a lot of first person shooters I've played that just don't get good gunplay across. Like, uh, first one on the top, off the top of my head would be Stalker. Like, great game, you know, but just the guns feel like they're all made of paper. And I, don't know. I also feel like you can make the argument that if you are a first person shooter, you should at least have that part down. Yeah, I the shooting. So. That's the yeah, absolutely. That's the most important thing. Um, but my biggest, like, so yeah, I love that part about Borderlands. That's why I'm playing Borderlands is to shoot things. But uh, I really, really hate the exposition. Yeah, it's not story. very. I, I used to think. Of, I mean, the other ones I, I enjoyed. This one, I'm it's kind of like exhausting a little bit. Yeah. It's just you know what, and the other ones were guilty of this, but like significantly less so but it's just i don't know the game is like super fun i'm shooting things and exploding and whatever and then they're like all right you gotta come back to the ship and talk to lil and she's a real downer and then there's ava who sucks and it's just we're gonna and then claptrap is gonna scream for 20 minutes <laughs> yeah. yeah we're just gonna drag the entire pacing of the game to a crawl and we're gonna force you just to wait around and you're gonna have to interact with barely tolerable characters with I don't know. Have they given you the ability to writers? Have they given you the ability to skip cutscenes yet? No. Oh god. And uh, you know, a big thing of it is like I told Ian, you know, where I was playing this one thing and it was after spoiler thing happened, and I just said like this could have been a cutscene, but no, instead it's in real time and I'm standing there watching a little of just talk and I, I'm thinking you know it just it's a waste of my time yeah and I really hate that I you know agree. it's a it's a shooting game there are games that have a story that's more complex and involved and everything like that and they present it in a much more digestible manner yeah I agree yeah. I still am gonna finish it I, I like it I just yeah I agree with your critiques yeah, yeah. So, I mean yeah great game otherwise but it's just Gearbox needs to hire some actual writers. <laughs> yeah. I feel like uh, my issue with the writing of Borderlands 3 is, uh, like, it's, it's, I think, I feel like it's more so in this game than in the other ones, but I feel like it was definitely an issue with Borderlands 2. Like, Borderlands 1, 
I didn't hate the story. Like, I felt like that was a proper pacing of things. It wasn't too, like, meme culture-y. It was, like... Oh, yeah, pop culture references to the lore. Like, yeah, like... They were, they were trying to write a decent script because, like, it was their first go, and, like, they weren't Gearbox. Like, a, like they were Gearbox, but they weren't, like, the super wealthy corporation that they are now. Right, like, nobody knew of them, yeah. But, like... In the later Borderlands games, like, I feel like the script will be, like, serious stuff, like, talking about all the sci-fi, high-concept, high capitalism, bad, like, sort of, like, shit. And then, like, every, like, they'll do, like, three lines of that, and then, like, the writers will be like, okay, well, it's a funny game, so I'm gonna have to say something funny and or quirky. And then, like, they'll do that. <laughs> and then it's just like, okay, so... There's that obvious comedic moment that you set up that wasn't funny and just kind of felt forced. And then yeah, it's super awkward and like cringy sometimes. Too. Yeah. yeah. Whereas agree. like when the side characters are purely goofy, though, they're, they're oftentimes like a lot more enjoyable because they're just like, "Ah, I need you to get my fucking underwear!" Woo! And then like you do that, and they're just like, "Oh, I love shitting!" And like that's more <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, guess I also think a big, I mean. This isn't fair that I should be comment or criticizing the game because of this, but Brandy Pitchford's a piece of shit, and that definitely has a <laughs> my overall going into this game, I would say. Like, fuck that guy. Randy Pitchford, come at me. <laughs> He's canceled. 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 That's right. He canceled himself. He's like Trump. He just can't help himself. Yeah. Every single goddamn story coming out about Randy Pitchford is a goddamn travesty. <laughs> Not wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, I just I want to say real quick. Uh, Captain Sheepy says uh, Randy Bitchford. She uh, they also um, say Randy Bitchford. So it looks like the, uh, the oh. colloquialism is is not. I'm uh, glad it's catching on. Yeah, yeah. I guess you coined so. it just like uh, I think the first person to actually say Randy Bitchford was Shakespeare. But that's yeah, right. bringing it back. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, Zach, Zach definitely, I was the first person I heard say Randy Bitchford, but, like, I know, I mean, I know that that's probably not a completely unique term. No, it's definitely not um, super new, new, unique. But Zach I came up with that it. That one on my own. Yeah, I came up with he that all on my own. It's nobody else. It's his. Part. And if it's um, trademarked, you'll be hearing from our lawyers. TM. I also came up with Fart Zuckerberg, and I'm very happy with that mm -hmm. one. Yeah, I, that's, uh, that's good, actually. Yeah, that's, good <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, when I was training for my bank job, I, uh, I, like, they, like we had to like write some shit about like, like during training, like we had to like do something like make basically like profiles, like bank profiles for like people that didn't exist, like not on a live network or anything like that. So like it wasn't like we were actually making bank accounts for people that didn't exist because that is very illegal. Mm. But um, you know, we were making these like and doing like test scenarios. We had like write down like customer motivations, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And I call I, I wrote Wells Fargo as smells fart go. <laughs> and uh, I always thought and my, my trainer was like, that's clever. I like that. No, it's really like, clever. I think it's clever too. Well done. Thank you. It's nice when one of those things come together. You're just like, yes, I had a gem. Smells and farts are in the same word. It's kind of like great. this whole thing is kind of the equivalent of, of like how, porn, like old porn used to try to just change like movie titles into like a, a dirty <laughs> title. Except <laughs> now it's down. except now it's turning people's or names into just like poop and fart references, which I can yeah. I can really get yeah. behind. It's great. Yeah, Cucker Carlson. We can always we can just do this forever for people All day. Just like. That's just the name of the uh that's just the name of the game now. Yeah. Yeah. Throbinwood. That's a good one I've always been <laughs> proud of for yeah, the, that, the porn title turned into a Also I'm not trying to kink shame any cucks out there, but yo, y'all are weird and you know it, so like you do you, but still. Just... Some people's kink is to be weird. That is right. Some people's, uh, look, I'm not going to yuck anybody's yum unless their <laughs> yum is getting yucked. Yeah, yeah. Unless you have a kink <laughs> where being shamed is specifically your thing. But then again, I also don't want Rule 34 for the draw bomb. So, like, fuck off. I do. Are you kidding me? That's <laughs> great publicity right there. <laughs> all right, it's, yeah. It's all right, the untapped market. Of rule 34. If anybody wants to draw, like, a draw bomb, just, like, taking it. Oh, <laughs> but the bomb guy is uh, a minor. 
So, oh, so no, don't no, do it. Wait, Stop limits. No, wait, you are not. <laughs> you do not get to write the draw bomb. <laughs> oh man, there's cannon. We have you on a few times, and now you're deciding yeah, his age. Yeah. yeah there's a Our whole. There's, my, have my you read the extended uh, universe? There's several yeah, books. Yeah, that's right. The X, the EU. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, my my beanbag bomb right there. He's from universe negative twenty three, and he is twelve. So oh, no. off limits, beanbag bomb. Yeah. All the uh, extended universe of the draw bomb uh, thing is is canon except for uh, when Chewbacca died. We we took that back off. That's right. <laughs> He's alive yeah. again. That one's been undone. Um, I can I actually speaking of like Star Wars Extended Universe, can yeah. I complain about something? Sure. About <laughs> the Star Wars Extended you Universe. Just let me complain about Borderlands Three for a billion years. Yeah, so we, yeah go ahead. we do that all the time. Um, my biggest complaint with the Star Wars Extended Universe is, okay, so, uh, I haven't read the Star Wars books, but I've read, uh, things about the Star Wars books, or where they're like, this is a reference to the Star Wars books. Um, so, there is a evil prince guy named Prince Zizor, and he's in the one Star Wars game, Shadows of the Empire. Yeah. Um, you go, you go through his palace, and et cetera, et cetera. Game, um, it was a multimedia Okay. okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, he makes a clone of Luke Skywalker, whose name is Luke, but he's uh, it's spelled with two U's. And so a W? No, two U's. Oh, double the U's. Two single U's. But like that's it. It was that's double like the U's. How they <laughs> That's it's just Luke and Luke. <laughs> Maybe so. What do you think the the purpose was? Is this it's so that like if he ends up like actually getting them mixed up, he can just check their birth certificate. <laughs> yeah. like, oh. um, switcheroo. It was a typo. This is a typo. <laughs> the guy at the when he, the guy at the like <laughs> when he was George born. Just fell asleep at the keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think George Lucas wrote any of the extended universe oh, stuff. Oh God, no. <laughs> Which, uh, have you guys also ever heard about Taller Luke? Taller Luke? Yeah. No. I don't know where I how I've heard about this or like why it exists, but like, I don't even know. So like the there's like this theory that there is a clone of Luke Skywalker or something like that in the star the original Star Wars movies. Where Luke is ten, like taller Luke is like two centimeters taller than regular Luke Skywalker. So like people have like meticulously compared frames of Luke Skywalker in different shots of Star Wars, standing next to characters, and then taking that character's height and then comparing it to how tall Luke Skywalker is on that screen. And in some, I guess, scenes, he is like two centimeters. It appears taller than. Uh, Harrison Ford, thus he is taller Luke in that scene. Or I feel like the like people that. doing this are like dumber flat earthers. Yeah, they, they <laughs> get too many shits that they just shouldn't. Hold on, I, I, maybe this is a fever. No, it exists. Bigger Luke is his name. <laughs> it really did just sound like a fever dream that you came up with. And maybe actually I, I like facts. I wanna, you know. I wanna. I'm gonna debunk this right now. The people screen. who believe in bigger loop just don't understand perspective. <laughs> yeah. Look, in this yeah, scene, he's way bigger than everybody else. He's just standing Can close to the camera. Can I show you guys the graphic that they are using to show the concept of bigger loop? I would loop. be upset if you did screen, Okay, if you, sh if you look at my screen, you just ruined the surprise. I guess it does ruin the uh, feature screen. Okay, here is bigger loop, the graphic. Are you posting the thing or? Oh shit! Oh, oh, oh it's like the little silhouettes, like the, from like the museum, like when there's like a man next to a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. Look how much taller, bigger Luke is. <laughs> That's so clearly not the same person. Could not be the same Luke. Uh, commonly abbreviated to BL, or more co uncommonly B, capital B, lowercase G L, is a slightly larger manifestation of Luke Skywalker. Who is abbreviating it? 
It's just They're making... scenes of the original Star Wars trilogy contrasting to regular Luke. So what you're saying is, because bigger Luke was too long, they had to make a smaller Luke, which is BL. <laughs> you know, when you, uh, when you talk about bigger Luke so often in normal conversation that you just have to abbreviate otherwise you're gonna you're just gonna have to say the bigger loop here's my issue because <laughs> you know you're constantly talking about it here's yeah just here's my issue down. if both luke's can comfortably wear the same clothing he's not that much bigger <laughs> no. maybe he just he's got a lot of water weight that day yeah he's he's bloated yeah but that's a thing that exists. Hey, you know, after quarantine, I was bigger Brandon, if you know what I mean. Hey. Hey. I got no hey. exercise. Hey. He's got jokes. Hickory dickory duck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. Bigger Luke. Well, that is a thing. That it's canon real... as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> bigger Luke is canon. Um visual evidence theories, the canon Luke hypothesis, sometimes simply the bigger Luke hypothesis, in which it is theorized that within the Star Wars universe verse and canon, there does indeed exist a version of Luke Skywalker that is slightly larger than a positive le- regular Luke Skywalker or Luke Prime. Jesus. I do Chill love, out, I love Star that the Wars bigger I love that the bigger uh, clone Luke just does the same stuff that Luke does. Yeah. And, like, he'll be like involved in conversation, stuff like that, that is Makes sense. Just <laughs> I'm formulating a new theory just because um, it seems like they also just like take up the same space at the same time. So for bigger Luke, just, maybe it's like a Russian nesting doll thing, and like a smaller Luke steps yeah. out of bigger Luke. For bigger Luke to exist and make sense, they have to be aware of each other. That's, yeah, yeah, I would have to assume. So well, maybe they like swap other, out. And they might destroy the universe because of all that whole uh, negative positive fucking energy thing maybe it's like a a full house olsen twins thing where they just take turns and then everyone's gonna accuse them of being like addicted to meth and anorexic when they're like not for a while that's later on in like the that's after that's in the the latest trilogy uh disney movie deals that's when he gets a much bigger look That's the that's when Netflix reboots it. I like I like the idea that much bigger Luke is like another inch. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> also introspective Luke Holland. It's like you need to work on your titles because you're really it's really misleading. I mean, have you watched Star Wars? Could we have called it names are gibberish? Slightly bigger Luke. Yeah. SPL. Like, SPL. Uh, slightly slightly um, wider Luke. <laughs> SWL. What, is there a slightly thicker Leia? Uh, you know, there was, but then she lost only... a lot of weight for the new movies. Yeah, uh, that whole coke nail thing really. Uh, she lost a lot. Oh, Rip torn in peace. Rip torn in peace. Croaking direction. Oh yeah. no, I would never. Carrie Fisher died. Ha. Did you do a laugh after you said that? This is my brother. So not that so kind. I'm You're so glad we brought him on the show. Yeah. You're canceled again. Unfortunately for us, that yeah. cancels out your first canceling, and you're back. Yeah, you're back. Cool. Wait, I was never canceled then. No, you're right. Your you're un- have just been canceled. Right. All right. I'm but, gonna go flip Alfred off while he's in the penalty box. So. You're officially going through the Family Guy stage of your cancellation, where you're you're back on. But not as good. Not as good, but just like, tell the same somehow. jokes you've and, been telling the whole show so far. Yeah, and somehow like uh, you're more successful. <laughs> you're just mad because you finished the show. <laughs> well, I'd say they're more successful if they went on for like another 16 seasons. Yeah, it's usually like in your 18th season, I think, when you reach your full potential. Yeah, exactly. That's when you. That's when the show really gets good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Look at the Simpsons. That movie was the pinnacle of animated cinema. I actually haven't seen the Simpsons movie. Really? I liked the movie actually. If I, I mean, I saw it like when it came out. So, yeah. but I and also, I was expecting it. I was, was expecting to compare it to Simpsons as it was on TV at the time, which is a very different yeah. level of quality. Um, yeah. So I guess when your bar's low, it kind of I think. Gives it more of a chance. Not to say that it, 
I'm going back on what I said, but I just I don't really remember whether I'd have to watch it again to have a yeah. If I, rem- I I'd probably have to watch it again too. But if I do recall correctly, my I originally thought that it was just like a, you know might as well just make a extra long Simpsons episode, right? Because I don't know, except they just want an excuse to put Bart's penis on the franchises that have an animated movie after it. You know, like you, you, there's a noticeable difference between the quality of the you know final render you know like the spongebob right. movie looks way different than spongebob on tv right and i'm talking about the writing too the movie the writing quality is better the movie than the tv show but same thing they bring more people in it's you know if, if the more money it's going to cost them the more money they're going to put into it or yeah, the more money they're overall more polished the more money they're the willing simpsons. to make yeah yeah the simpsons definitely the movie had you know more um complicated shots and things like that but right. you know overall i just felt like it didn't look that drastically different from it didn't. the tv show um and i also felt like the pacing could have been a lot better you know because they had so much that they could only cram into what an hour and 30 minutes right i feel like it was just not the best that they could have done but yeah, again yeah. you know i'm also not a film you know professional there's one excuse to put Bart's penis on film. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> um, and boy howdy, what a penis. <laughs> Again, I haven't seen the movie, so... Um, I will say, though, in true... Not this is necessarily a compliment. It may be the opposite, but in true... Bart's penis? Exactly. <laughs> no, the movie. In true Simpsons form, even the plot of the movie is like... Just like a copy of a thousand things plots. that have come... <laughs> Before it. Yes. By the way, I like that Squidian. Thank you, he is a squid. Yeah. Um, yeah, since the movie was... Uh, just, I should watch it again, yeah. or maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. We'll see. I think if there's one takeaway we can all get from the Simpsons movie, it's that the Simpsons did it. Yes. Simpsons did it. I mean... It makes sense. If you're gonna have a show for that long, you probably should have a movie at some point. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Although, I liked, um, there was this ep- uh, episode of Hot Ones that had Charlie Day on it, where he was asked, like, if they were ever planning on doing a It's Always Sunny movie, and he was like, we pretty much already do what we want on the show, so, like... What's the point? Yeah. Yeah, which I kind of was like, that's that's fair. I think that's a very good... I mean, you could obviously make a shit ton more money with a It's Always Sunny movie than... TV show, but I'm sure they just want to like yeah. cash their check and then do their all, all their own separate projects. I think no, what's I the point is like a good question to ask. The, it's always sunny, sunny to make money, you know. That's sure that they have uh, has a benchmark of quality to it. Oh yeah, yeah I, I would agree as well. Yeah. And Brandon, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk to you. Oh no, you're good. You're good. I'm such a dick. Nah, if it weren't you doing it, I'd be doing it. Somebody else. Yeah, we all talk over each other. That's kind of the nature yeah. of the beast in this thing. It's That's con- how I excuse myself talking over everybody. <laughs> ah, make it excuse By blaming you. everyone else for doing it, too. By just saying that's the kind of show it is. Yeah. We can't a, correct this problem. It's the nature of this. It's thing. a competitive show. That's right. <laughs> Blame it on Twitch. <laughs> Mixer. Draw Mixer. bomb now moving to Mixer. Tune in totally. next week. And, it, and Mixer's gonna be around forever. Mm-hmm. I had a whole bunch of t-shirts made with the Mixer logo, and I think it's gonna really pay off. Um, I yeah. invested a lot. I, sorry, I'm just telling you about it now. I just wanted to surprise you, Ian. We are moving the show oh. to Mixer. Oh, I hope that th- that pays off super well. Uh, I, how could it anyway. not? We'll have to have a, a discussion <laughs> about that. What? There's some news. Uh, you news? know how there's been that uh, voice coming in your earpiece for like the last two days? Um, we'll talk about it later, but you might want to hear what the guy in the earpiece is saying. Oh. He's saying burp, 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 burp. Well, that's what I thought he was saying, though. I thought he was going to get a better microphone. Uh, yeah, well, you know, when that mixer money starts rolling in, we'll buy it for him. Microphones for everyone. We're gonna make so much money off of Mixer. Yeah, dude. Dude. They signed a ninja for like 30 million. I wonder where all their money went. <laughs> like, all of capitalism is just that drill tweet where he's like, 
Uh, here are my expenses. Rent, $200. This, $50. Food, $100. Candles, $3,000. Somebody help me budget this. My family is dying. <laughs> <laughs> Something just happened. I just did a thing by accident. Hold on. You did a thing by accident. Okay. Should I save this drawing? I think my... I, I don't got my job to do it. Okay, I didn't understand that, but I'll take it as a yes. <laughs> yeah. I said, I it. Oh, I guess I did hear you perfectly then. <laughs> yeah, in terms of actual movies, though, there's not anything coming out that I'm interested in seeing. I imagine so, that'll be the like case for like years. a year. I mean, it has been that way for years, but like I'm saying now, it's gonna be like yeah. the writer's strike type thing, because nobody's, I don't think people are hanging out making movies right now. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, but on top of that, uh, we were just, I do, I do some work for this gallery and they have this one show every year where they, the theme is movies that came out 30 years ago. And the list is like amazing every time. And it's like, I can't, it's hard to believe all these movies came out in one year. And then, and then I, as I like exercise, I checked what movies came out like the last like ten years and the lists are just abysmal. <laughs> there's like nothing that's yeah. going to be nothing that's going to be re like revered in thirty years. Like except for like there's like one or two each year. Yeah, there's a couple gold ones yeah. coming out, but yeah, it's just. But it's I mean, because all the money goes into TV now. Remake Central. I think TV is cheaper and it yeah. allows you to do more, and I think it's just more. <laughs> makes more sense from a creator standpoint and, and I think you're right on that movies are such you know big what, budget when I sit down to like watch Netflix I am not interested in watching a full length movie I'd rather just stick to short chunks of you know something episodic right. like 30 minutes and if I want to watch more I can if I don't want to fuck it I think from a producer standpoint uh, it's cheaper to make less risk higher reward um and you can be more creative because you don't have to. There's not like millions of dollars running on lot riding on the line. From a writer yeah. standpoint, if you have 20 episodes of TV, you can really write a lot. You know, you can flesh things out in a lot more than just trying to crap cram a whole story into 90 minutes. So like, I think it's yeah. just it's like the new kind of ideal way Plus, people go. If you consider it, also like you make a movie, you get a budget. And then you get paid from that budget, and then that's like a once and done. Um, but if you get a TV show, that's at least like a year or two where you're like just on a payroll, right? Screw sure. getting getting that money. So to like make farts in a bag season two. There were a number of years that I was just like disappointed with like the stuff coming out because digital platforms hadn't reached the level they're at yet, and movies were too expensive. So. The only things they release were sure things, which are like remakes and reboots. So now yeah. we're kind of at a good place. I feel like I'm happy with the amount of stuff that's coming out, but it's not in movie form anymore. Now it's like TV. But I always have stuff to watch. That in like lots of new stuff, but it's it's all TV now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, not even new stuff. I can just because of the access to all the different movies that you have on, say, Amazon and Netflix, and Hulu, and all that stuff. Uh, it's just. I, I will die, like, and nothing nothing new could come out ever again, and yeah. I would still never run out of things. To Easy, watch. yeah. Uh, there's probably I'm sure if you if you uh, tallied up the amount of time it would take to watch all the like, let's just say I know it's uh, subjective, but just the worthwhile content is probably more than there is in the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure, like, by the time I'm in my 80s, I'm going to be topping off and start, like, venturing into, like, the lesbian romance section of mm -hmm. Netflix, but... Why, like, why are you going to wait so long? For the most part... Yeah, I don't know. Time to go see what is so warm about this color blue. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like an 80-year-old lesbian. <laughs> I can relate to this. I wonder what L word they are referring to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have any other jokes. No, <laughs> I think no that's was, a good. That's a good mic drop one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that.
Um, yeah, I mean, this is too much TV. I've been, uh, uh, you know, as you know, I've been going through the Seinfeld, uh, watching the Mystery Science Theaters, um, just kind of have shit going on in the background while I draw and stuff like that. Um, Zach and I have been checking out uh, Crossing Swords on Hulu, which is, like, animated by the uh, Robot Chicken guys, and it's about, like, uh, it's about, like, this guy who's, like, a squire, and he's just basically trying to be, like, a good knight squire to the king and like the whole kingdom's all messed up and it's people like, are dicks it's basically one of those shows like archer or something else where like everyone is like a crazy personality and like everyone is just like irredeemably shitty yeah and the main character is pretty much the only straight like the straight man in the the whole equation yeah, worth watching just wacky what was that worth watching yeah it's pretty yeah, funny so far we haven't finished it but it's Good. We're about three episodes in, I would say. Cool. Or we've watched three episodes. Well, if, if you keep watching it before I get it, I mean, if you finish it or whatever, get to a point where you have a, a full opinion of it before I get a chance, let me know if it worth, yeah. worthwhile. So far, what I can say for it is that, like, I guess in terms of, like, general setting, it's similar to Disenchantment, but Disenchantment has more likable characters, but Crossing Swords has, uh, it's just better better stories overall. It's a little bit looter and more violent than just Disenchantment was. Gotcha. I have actually I still haven't seen Disenchantment either. I watched it's the first right. season. I mean, yeah. don't they have like two seasons out yeah. now? Maybe yeah, I think they have two seasons and they're teasing for a third now. But yeah, it's a good show. I liked it. Um it's not like uproariously funny like the earlier Simpsons and Futurama is, but you know, it's got some moments that made me laugh out loud. It's more or less just I like I like the story of it, just the adventure. Yeah. It's a nice fantastical setting. The art style is is nice because it reminds me of Futurama. Yeah. With season one I didn't find myself like laughing hysterically like I would with like you said, early Simpsons or Futurama, which was what I was hoping for, but ultimately, like, I kept watching the rest of the season because the story was interesting enough. Yeah, it was super engaging. I think the characters in it are very charming, which I find characters in almost everything kind of annoying. Um, and I, I like Princess Bean, I like her dad, and uh, just all the characters. Lucy and, and Elfo, very good. So I would recommend it if anybody is interested. You're here to hear, folks. You got the. You're right. here first. You the, the Zach uh, Newton drop bump. bomb guy who's on this show seal of approval. It's like Zach's favorite things club. That's right. <laughs> this enchantment and gets this the stamp. <laughs> the stamp of Zach, and now if you check under your seats, everyone will see. Oh no, I forgot to put it there. Shit. Oh geez. Okay, if anyone finds a snake. <laughs> Don't touch it. He's really toxic. <laughs> and under everybody's seat is parking validation. Thanks for coming. Hey. Thanks for coming. <laughs> That's right. I know a lot of people were complaining, so we we, we pulled, heard you. We pulled a couple we're of listening. So, so I, I mentioned yeah. a little bit to Ian earlier today, but uh, I just finished Last of Us 2 today. Oh, that's right, you did. Oh, nice. And I really loved it. I thought it was great. I liked the first one a lot, too, though, so I don't know. You know, just... I wouldn't say it's as good as the first, but I liked it a lot. Um, did you have fun? I had a lot of fun, yeah. Oh, don't let I the had, creators hear that. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, they want you to be depressed when it's over. Yeah, they want you feeling bad. <laughs> and they, they did. But guilty. it was still fun. Yeah, no. Good, good. I like I like to be to be beaten up emotionally by the time I'm done consuming my media. That's my king. <laughs> That's right. Make me make me laugh, make me cry. Do it all. I can't yeah, feel emotion in real life, so I look to video games and movies to do it. Some good old BDS entertainment. Yeah. But no, I, I liked it. Um, yeah. I, you had mentioned it was given some crap for violence, and I don't disagree with that. I don't... Whether or not it's gratuitous is a question. 
there's a ton of violence in the game, and there was in the first, like, over the top, like, nothing's really, I haven't played many things as brutal. Um, yeah. but, I, I would, I could almost, I'm sure some of it, you could show me a lot of examples of things that aren't necessary, but I can almost argue that it's not gratuitous because the story is just about, basically, how violence is bad, and, <laughs> and so, you have to be exhausted of it as the viewer by the time it's over to feel like the characters do. Yeah. I think. That's how I interpreted it. So, from that standpoint, like, you need to see the brunt of it to... Because, I mean, every game has... Think about all the games that you kill. By the time... What's your, like, kill count by the time you're done playing a video game? Like, you just killed yeah. a thousand people? Yeah. Th this game does a good job of making you actually feel bad about it <laughs> a little bit or, or tired of it. Which I think is something that a lot of games are unable to pull off. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I guess one of the biggest criticisms for the game that I heard was they're like, yeah, you know, the message is violence is bad. You know, we're we all human beings except for the quickers, so like, don't kill each other. But then it, uh, people were like, but you made it so fun. <laughs> well, yeah, That's you know, ultimately it is a, a video game. game. I feel like since it's a story video game, you can have fun in the process, but still feel, you know, like message-wise differently than, like you can have fun in the combat, but then like as the, if you're invested in the story, it doesn't mean that, you know, that you can't sense. have both. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. Yeah, but no, I don't know, I liked it. Have, have either of you played the first one? I have not, no. I think... What? This is a solid. Game. PlayStation. Oh yeah, our PlayStation Three died like before that game came gotcha. out by about two years. Something funny when I was playing Last of Us Two, I there you 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 like r r rummage through a bunch of houses and find like supplies and stuff. And I found I, I found a few houses that had PlayStation Threes, but there's no PlayStation no. Fours because the world ended before <laughs> before that came out. <laughs> I thought that was a nice that little detail. Good. Little did they know they were only off by a few years. Right. That, that is poor timing on their part. I know that the game yeah. was, you know, that's been probably been worked on for like five years, but, or whatever, however long game takes. But, uh, yeah. It's unfortunate that a game about a pandemic comes out during one. True. Yeah, it's... Yeah. I mean, it was bound to happen. I mean, yeah, like, was, I feel like there's a, like three big name pandemic stories that happen like every True. year in, in media somewhere so it, it was you know it's like it's like uh, a bank robbery happening and then there being like a movie coming out about like bank robbers right the like clock happening. is right twice a day fair fair it wasn't like I mean I, I it didn't like bum me out to play it during this it just kind of like something it's like hey yeah. this is supposed no, to be escapism a... what are you doing <laughs> right. Yeah. Escapism. For the first month of quarantine, everyone played Animal Crossing. I thought you said For the atheism. second month, <laughs> it's uh, Pandemic Simulator. <laughs> yeah. Basically. No, but I, I think it was a good game. It was cool. Uh, it does a. I feel like Naughty Dog's really good at telling stories, and uh, this one did a really cool fit without spoiling anything. Even though there's yeah. spoilers everywhere, it did a really cool <laughs> way of. Uh, humanizing the villain and kind of giving their point cool. of view and showing what the whole it's all a revenge tale so it kind of like shows why that's like a not really a worthwhile pursuit in the end but revenge is a dish best served cold um but yeah, what are some other dishes that are best Trek, served cold huh? ice cream um uh, gazpacho uh, ceviche oh <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know what's funny is that uh, that revenge is a dish, dish best served cold quote. I, I'm pretty sure that's a Star or uh, Star Trek quote. <laughs> I thought it was from Shakespeare. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Shakespeare. So like in the beginning of Kill Bill Volume One, they have that quote come up on the screen, and then when they attribute the quote, they say it's a Klingon proverb. <laughs> that could be. I think just because Quentin Tarantino's a Fucking nerd. <laughs> I'm looking it up. Uh, meaning and origin. Phrases.org.uk. 
Org phrases.co.org. No, .org.uk. Okay. Um, okay, nevertheless, the phrase isn't tutor. A quick online search will yield confidently expressed views that revenge is a dish best served cold is a translation of the line, La vengeance est un plat qui se man Freud from Pierre Chardot de Lacroix's epistolary novel, Les da La Liaisons Dangereux. So. Which is a book from the extended uni Star Trek universe. That's yeah. right, with a uh, bigger, tr uh, with bigger Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly bigger. Does bigger Kirk <laughs> have a Kirk. Uh, evil goatee? <laughs> yeah, that's about to say. And he speaks a little bit more uh, modest, like staccato, like <laughs> Shatner does. So. I, we don't have to stay on this the whole time, but I just have one more question because you raised an interesting point that you said some of the criticisms were with Back to the Last of Us were where that uh, yeah. it is violent but it's fun. Do you is there such thing as an off limits level of violence in media? In uh, obviously, it is blowing up the twin towers. <laughs> well, Rick and Morty got in trouble for it because the fans were so mad. I'm, my, they were <laughs> my, I'm just saying, like... I was going to say, I don't remember that contract. I don't I either. I heard about that one. Uh, in the, yeah, that was, uh, it lasted for, like, three days, because, you know, there's a whole shitstorm going on in the world right now, so... So, I... My, my opinion is similar to, like, writing a joke. Even the most horrible thing can be funny if you're not just punching down and being, like, taking the low-hanging fruit, if you could be clever about any terrible thing and make it funny, if there's actually some kind of craft to it and not, like, it's not, like, yeah. hurting people or, like, being a low blow. And the same thing with yeah, violence. No, I agree with you on that one. I think, uh, just to answer your question earlier is, like, to give you a legitimate answer is to what, like, level of violence would not be fun. Because, yeah, that's, like, the whole point of video games is, like, it's, it's a hyper-masculine, hyper... -masculine, hyper power fantasy you know and and you're you're going off doing these crazy things in the world that you can't do in real life um and jim sterling did a video covering the last of us too and obviously though you know he gave his impressions on the game and how it was supposed to be received by the media or players and everything like that and the way you put it was yeah the game hits upon the, the note that, you know, violence is bad. Violence is what really tears us apart for all people. And that's what Jim Sterling said, was if you're trying to say that, why make the violence so fun? Mm. Um, so, and he hits upon something that I want to visit with, like, what level of violence would not be fun? And he went on to talk about how, like, murder simulation, like, violent video games were attacked by the media for years as, like, murder simulators right and then he took an actual quote from i forget who i think the development head of last of us 2 and they're like yeah we really want to get across the simulation simulated feeling of committing murder and jim sterling was like wait hold up guys so that's silly um and and you know that's i i think pointing out that type of hypocrisy is is important but on top of that, I think, yeah, just, like, super... There is a way you could do violence in a way that could be legitimately disturbing and not fun. Yeah. And I think certain movies carry that across very well. Um, you know, and movies, of course, are known so well for just, like, treating life like, you know, grains of salt and well, people die all the time. But well, then, you know, there are certain movies that do have an impactful scene where someone dies and you're like, yeah, that guy's dead. One uh one thing I remember is uh, we were watching uh, it part two in uh, theaters with some friends, and uh, you know that movie was all right. It was, it was I pretty whack. Part two, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was visually interesting. Like it was like they gave the uh, special effects team like a huge budget to just like go wild with the effects and stuff like that. But like you know the movie itself was pretty dumb uh, and kind of goofy in a lot of respects. Um, but okay, so the movie starts out the very first scene is a hate crime oh, <laughs> so uh. uh so the very first scene in the movie is like these uh two gay guys are at like a carnival um it's the carnival is taking place in the town that like the first hit movie takes place and where everyone goes back to um but yeah these dudes are at a carnival and then like these like uh rough 
punks are like, hey, you guys are gay, you know, say all the hate crimey stuff. And then uh, the dudes leave the carnival, and then, like, it's them getting hate crimes where, like, they get the shit kicked out of them, and then, like, the one dude gets dumped in a river while he's unconscious. And, like, it's only after, like, the dude is already dead from the hate crime that, like, the clown then eats the dude's body. So it's not like the clown killed the guy. Like, basically, like, I mean, I, I can't, I can't, you know, speak for that experience, but I imagine if you were, like, a, a gay person watching that movie, I imagine watching that scene would be uh, a pretty uncomfortable experience yeah. because that's kind of a thing that still happens to people. And I feel like yeah. ha showing just a pretty pretty realistic hate crime scene it might not be a super good experience for yeah like obviously it's supposed to be a scary movie and it's supposed to be like you know etc cetera, etc cetera. but that's like a experience that's like too viscerally real. viscerally scary yeah. for like way too people. real because that's something people deal with you know for a very specific group get accosted by a killer clown that eats people yeah that's not can. real well but, you know then like you, you're watching the movie about a killer so like i think scenes like that where uh you know, maybe specific, like, there's abstracting murder and abstracting things in media and, like, you know, showing murder, but also at the same time still, you know, this is a fake murder, it's not a real murder, and that's fine, but then, like, you know, like, there's video games that are, like, you know, for shock value where it's just, like, this is Columbine Simulator, and, like, that's obviously... No Russian. Right, that's, uh, yeah. That's... Well, no Russian's not based on a real murder. Well, no shit, but it is a mass shooting. <laughs> Well, no, but I'm, I'm speaking specifically about, like, real things. But anyways... Well, I mean, mass shootings happen. Mass... Okay, but I'm <laughs> talking specifically about Columbine and, like, mass shoot... Like, murders that have for real happened, <laughs> like, are probably a, a place that... You, it's like we were talking about the Foxcatcher movie last week, where it's a movie where you just kind of watch, like, the lead-up to a murder, and... I still haven't really figured out what they're trying to say in the movie aside from like here's a murder and like same with like true true crime stories like when you t like you talk about movies like Fruitvale Station where like the whole point of the movie is like this real murder that happened to this guy at the hands of the police and like you're building up like a whole thing to show like what a loss of life it was for the guy to to die that way uh, at the end of the movie um, but then like you know if you take a movie like Foxcatch where you're just kind of like here's a murder like i feel like that's shakier ground yeah and um you know and like the whole like when you mentioned like people making shock valley stuff i think that kind of falls under like when i use the comparison to like writing jokes how you can you can just do something for shock that punches down and it's just like the offense is part of what they're trying to do but that's yeah that i would totally agree that's not cool at all but, uh, yeah. use, like, if you, I feel like, I don't know what I'm trying to say. And then also, when, Zach, when you were saying, uh, uh, the thing about how, yeah, there's, like, a weird confliction with, they're saying violence is bad, but then also it ends up being fun. You make a good point, it makes me rethink about the game, and something I did notice that I just thought of when you said that is that, so, and maybe this is something they should have changed, except for it's a sequel and the gameplay has to reflect the first one but yeah. when you're when you're going through the levels and you're fighting zombies and you're taking out like people who are looking for you and bad people that part's fun um when you get to the more i mean if you've played naughty dog games you know that they kind of avoid cutscenes. i mean not necessarily avoid them but if you can play something they usually let you play it rather than show you it yeah and there's a lot of up close very violent scenes in the game that those actually do feel uncomfortable they're not i don't think anybody playing those scenes is like we like even there's, yeah, there's even yeah. scenes where the protagonist who i is getting one of the people that they've been after the whole game and when you get to that up close like animated like scene that you're it's like even i'm like ah like uncomfortable like it actually works then so like they nailed it then you actually feel like this is not right or good, you know, that this yeah. character is doing this in those moments. But then when you're in, like, the mid-level stuff where you're, like, skulking around in the bushes and taking people out one by one, that part's fun. So, yeah, it's interesting that there's, like, even though ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, it's all killing people. Certain ones, they 
they do hit the mark of making you feel not good about the actions you're taking. Even the characters, like, in the script, after they're done doing stuff, they're, like, visibly shaken and they're, like, getting PTSD and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, I think, drives home. I, I feel like that is a criticism, criticism I have of just media in general, is that, yeah, for the most part, it really downplays violence, like, it, it just desensitizes us, you know? Yeah. We've been watching violent movies and playing violent video games since we were kids, and, I mean, I don't think any of us are prone to be psychopaths and go on rampages in the future, but yeah, there are, uh, ways that the media can, or not media, but entertainment media can convey, like, the weight of taking a human life. Right. And, yeah, there have been examples in the past, and it seems like uh, The Last of Us 2 does at least, you know, hit that mark at some points, whether they intended for those scenes to be as impactful for the certain reasons that they intended, or was it just uncomfortable because even though you're seeing some polygons that look vaguely humanoid, there's still that uncanny valley and you're kind of like just seeing a human getting murdered. Like, is it, I don't know, there's there's a whole lot, like, it, it's tricky because there's a whole lot of qualifiers to, like, you know, murdering someone. Like, is, is your character hell-bent on revenge and in the end, are they happy with their revenge? Who knows? But, right. Uh, I just feel like, for the most part, and it's nice to see The Last of Us do try and take some sort of different stance to it because yeah it just seems like human life is treated so cheaply a lot of times i would love yeah. to oh sorry go ahead uh, you, you say your thing first because now, now i was going to go off on another tangent i was just going to say i'd love to watch that review you were talking about oh my wow, gosh give me the link. it's jim sterling he's wow really good 75 dollars just donated what? Ha- under the awesome. term happy birthday what happy birthday wasted seven what who but Somebody then, likes you, Eli. But then we don't know who it, it says, is because their name is Happy Birthday. <laughs> annual celebration of we your spawning by way of magnificent, magnificent computation machinery. In all caps. Aww. Oh, that's super that's nice. going to the computer fund. Woo! Woo! Thank you, person who gave me 75 full-ass awesome. dollars. Holy that's shit. You have 100 bucks oh, in your is... fund. Papa's getting a new computer soon. Damn. Yeah, we're working on it that is for sure i mean that helps yeah. <laughs> I mean, thank you yeah. so much whoever yeah. you anonymous yeah, donor is and you don't have to thank stay you. anonymous unless you want to yeah you, you can stay anonymous if you want no pressure but if you don't want to be anonymous like i'd be more than happy to give you a big kiss on the lips a big wet one well you might want to stay anonymous because i've kissed you and, and it tastes like a sack of right when did you kiss me? It was when you were asleep. Don't worry about it. When but uh, you're um, you're right now you shouldn't be kissing strangers during the COVID. No, that's true. The COVIDs. The COVID. Yeah, I can't get that Rona. Ah, that's um, awesome. Wow, thank you so much. I, I hate to shift gears. <laughs> I feel like we should. That was super nice. Though. Well, well they're, so they're nice anonymous, so unless they reveal themselves. That's true. Yeah. Um, but thank you, you so much. Yeah, that's really yeah, awesome. That's, insanely sweet of you to do that that is awesome people are good yeah some people um this person is good yeah uh one one thing i was gonna say in regards to the the, the violence topic that we would talk yeah. about um I've, I've talked with austin about this sort of thing before um it's like a you know it's as people who work on stories and things like that it's a subject that comes up but like uh, one thing Austin has said is that, like, you know, with Game of Thrones and, like, all these, like, TV shows that are, like, crazy gore and, like, yeah. violence and then, like, and it's, like, a lot of media has decided in, like, the last decade, maybe a little longer or something like that. I don't know how recent I would say it goes back, but, like, a lot of media is sort of, like, as Austin put it, like, or, and, 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 you know, he can, he can rip me anyone for, like, completely misrepresenting his, his line of thinking on this, but, like, a lot of media is basically selling you trauma. Right. It's <laughs> basically like, yeah. hey, isn't this fucked up thing that you have to think about? Don't you love this person? Well, we just killed them in front of you with our bare hands, and, hey, uh, what if that guy, like, lost an eye and you had to watch it, and then, like, just a bunch of shit like that. Like, a lot of, like, media nowadays thinks that it's being uh, more meaningful and uh you know like saying something when a lot of it is just selling you trauma i will say though there yes there is like 
uh, gratuitous not, stuff that's just for the sake of like the shock and nothing changes or benefits from it. But I do love the new modern like trend of sometimes killing off main characters because for the first time in all of television, I'm actually nervous when they go out on their mission. I don't know. I know they're not all going to be yeah. back next week hanging out. Like, boy, what a what a scrape yeah. we got into that time. But we're back. Yeah, this isn't Tony Stark dying in Marvel and then his alternate version from another universe comes in and takes his place. This is like, you're dead, you're fucking dead. Yeah. That's happened yet. Yeah, like, Star Trek would be a lot scarier if people were getting picked off wearing red shirts all the time. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I do appreciate that, like, you know, it's, there's that this actual because risk. Actual stakes, you know, nothing, nothing makes a story interesting like stakes. And I think that's also another thing when it comes to movies and TV shows is, um, like a movie especially nowadays like a movie wants to sell you uh the sequel it's going to eventually do and uh I, yeah they gotta set up that franchise they gotta set up that franchise they gotta set up that ex- cinematic universe that extended universe um they gotta set up that bigger tony stark um, gotta find a way to get paul rudd on board <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right so i uh it's it's um you know, I, I think with TV shows and the fact that, like, a TV show is almost already a franchise if you, like, finish your first season, essentially, and, like, if you get renewed for the second, you know, you could actually argue, though, that, like, TV shows are also the biggest perpetrators of not killing off their main characters, so I actually don't have, yeah. a, I don't have a very cogent an- analysis for this, this topic. They are. That's what, mainly what I, the point out, I know it might be a little bit different than what you were saying, but that's kind of the point I was on is just, for the longest time, TV was, like, the same gang is back every week. They always, every you know, especially in like adventure shows, there's always risk, but it's not real. Yeah. You're, always, yeah. You, you're literally watching going, I wonder how they're going to get out of this one. Yeah. The Duke boys flip their car, it's upside down, somehow lands on its wheels, and everything's fine. Uh, well, but the Duke boys are going to catch some wings if they don't get, get <laughs> uh, over this jump. Thanks, Waylon Jennings. You have a great commercial break as well. <laughs> I'll see you in a few. Um, and then he came back from the commercial break and well, looks like them Duke boys didn't make that jump and uh, are dead. So yeah. uh, wow, didn't see that coming. That good. Moonshine and ain't quite the profitable business. <laughs> Old Duke is a vegetable and Duke, Duke got turned into a tomato can. Turns out it's dangerous having a a uh, a trunk full of volatile alcohol while doing car jumps. Yeah. They um, all got third degree burnt real bad. So now yeah, Duke's got canceled anyways because they they're waving the Confederate flag. That's right. Yeah. Um. So I have a question then about the well, we're on violence because this is interesting to me. Um, okay. Yeah. So maybe this could be we could we, it's very simple uh, or possible that the answer to this is just that an entire lifetime of consuming this media has broken my brain and turned me into a psychopath. But what what about things where violence is fun? What about, like, like a Quentin Tarantino movie or Doom or, like, where I'm literally kind of squealing with joy as people are being, like, hurt really bad? Is it, does that mean something? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's I'm broken? Fantasy, man. What? No. That's, that's well, no, I know. I, I don't see behind it. You know, it's... it's and it's not even the same that... The Three Musketeers, you know, way back in the day when people were, you know, riding around on dinosaurs to get around. And I may also argue that, for me, it's not necessarily, I don't think it's a power fantasy thing. It's more like I'm witnessing something that in every other capacity would be completely awful. But because it's not real, and I know it's not real, and everybody's safe, and it's purely entertainment, I can almost like, it's almost like how a roller coaster is fun, because in any other situation that you're flying through the air from 300 feet up you're going to die and this time you're not it's like okay this shouldn't yeah. be possible but it is so i'm enjoying it because i'm so like in this bizarre situation that would never exist in any other yeah, yeah. and i think also with uh with media that's violent there's like a uh, you know and this this also your mileage may vary depending on the thing you're, you're consuming but like it's a there's an element of, of catharsis to it like whenever we're watching a thing usually like when we're having fun like we're killing the bad guy and the bad guy is like irredeemably obviously evil and like we know that defeating him will not have any negative repercussions because that's how the story goes 
Whereas in real life, like, you know, even, or, you know, maybe in games like Last of Us, like, even, like, when violence is enacted, maybe even on bad people, like, bad shit still happens as a result of that. Like, there's never a true, like, moral victory like you find in fiction. So yeah, I right. think there's a sort of a narrowing of the, uh, like, it's, it's, I mean, I guess basically what it is, is it's, it all comes down to reductionism. <laughs> like, it's all, like, reduced violence. Uh, you know, add water, condensed soups type shit. Yeah, where it's not real violence, and that's what makes. And it's 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 like why people slow down at car accidents and things like that. Like there's a morbid curiosity with death right. and with violence yeah. and all these things that we uh, we can't do, and we know are morally bad. And because we know they're morally bad, we take We're it's, fascinated you know, by it's like yeah, yeah it's my, like my a cookie when you've been told you can't have any more cookies. Yes. Yeah. My, uh, I guess my closing thought on this would be that, like, The Last of Us 2, kudos to developers for actually trying to tackle that subject matter. It, it's up to the audience as to whether they come across as tone deaf or not. Right. But, uh, you know, and I don't think violence in, in media really takes it too far until, like, they make a, a, a VR game where, you know, you, you basically make a list and you stalk a person and then you just like slowly stab them to death and it's just horrible uh then i'll be like yeah guys this is a murder simulator this is very uncomfortable but right. uh, other than that you know shit's fair game you know you give me some a, a gun to explode things with or you give me a fighting game character and i can just like punch a whole bunch of things to death yeah, yeah I'll, keep, I'll keep doing that <laughs> So it's complicated. Is the it is, is the final yeah. thought? And yeah, I think it's that's a, it is large and it contains multitudes, just like everything else. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna save this one. I like your terrifying hot dog, Brandon. <laughs> Thanks. That's my yeah, favorite part too. Trippy skeleton school. Yeah, I was drawing a trippy skeleton. It yeah, but that trippy. hot dog is terrifying. He's just got Would that. you be more scared of the hot dog or the skeleton shooting lasers? I'm more scared of the hot dog because it's got, like, you know, that's like the sausage twist, but it also looks like a swinging ball sack. I noticed that after I did it. smile that is just, it's nothing but gums. I don't like that I can see his gums. <laughs> and it's terrifying. Honestly, I would not want to eat a, a hot dog that had teeth. No. I wouldn't want to eat that hamburger either, but I don't know. I think I would just, because I'd, I'd take off his shoes. I think that, that would be a choking. You thing. guys are all okay with the eyeballs on everything. You just don't want Hey, eyeballs are a delicacy in some countries. <laughs> I was going to say, the hot dog had, uh, both of those foods had eyeballs at one point. Well, I, that's why I added googly eyes to my taco and my pizza, because I just felt like, well, yeah. Yeah, I really missed out that you guys were doing, like, a food theme over there. <laughs> I just felt like drawing a taco, and then, you know, it just kind of happened. I saw the taco, and then I did a hamburger, and then, you know, the rest is history. Yeah, it just gets away from you. I draw the taco. I open I draw the taco. taco. This song was made by neo Nazis. I <laughs> draw the taco. All right, so who who's the guy that did the review? I know you told me already, but I forgot. I just wanted uh, to. Oh, uh, Jim Sterling. Yeah, Jim Sterling. Sterling. Yeah, I'm write that guy. down. He, I want to watch it. Around, uh, he started out as a writer for Destructoid. At least that's where I first heard of him. But he went off and did his own thing. Um, started making his own like. You, his like he did like videos that were really popular on Destructoid, uh, starting out with a series called like Video Games What I Played, and then just like his reviews that were always pretty like in your face. Yeah. Um, He's got uh, his brand is definitely like super harsh criticism, but it's always in the right place and his heart's in the right place like he's, he's he, a good dude actually he's, i've checked his social media he's, I'm, really good he's big on like consumer advocacy and nice. you know kind of sticking it to dickhead triple a companies who are abusing their workers and stuff yeah i will watch it i'm whenever i can finish consuming like a a book or a movie or a game that i like the story i'd like to just like read everybody's take on it yeah, yeah, and he, yeah, he had some very poignant views on The Last of Us. Cool, I'll check that and, out. And he said basically, like, yeah, the game's fun. It's a good game, but it's not really what the developers said that they wanted <laughs> out of, Fair. like, my experience to be. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll have to check that out. Mm hmm please do. Shall we do a rock, paper, pencil, guys? Oh, sure. Yeah. We got right. 30 minutes left.
Yeah, 30 minutes is a good time. So I had an idea for a topic for Rock, Paper, Pencil. Feel free to veto this. Um, but, like, pointless clones of yourself, like Bigger Luke. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> redundant clones. Oh, of ourselves? Like s- oh, how about just redundant clones? And it could be, a, it leaves it a little bit more broad. Unless you think it should be of us. Oh, I mean, redundant clones of anybody, it can be of us, yeah. but, like, just, like, the idea of, like, a redundant... It's, like, super use of superpowers. I like but it. Redundant clones. I know exactly what I'm gonna do, and you guys might hate me for it, but... <laughs> but I, I figured right. out what I want to do, actually, for this. Well, I'm the only one who doesn't know yet, but I'll figure it out. Well, if you, if you feel like... Do you like this idea for a rock, paper, pencil? I do. Okay, cool. Let me help you draw the uh, title. Okay. Oops. It's a shame that taller Luke is already is a thing because that that would be a great draw, like draw <laughs> just like a taller version of a character that everybody knows. <laughs> it's like it's about like the it's like the best version of this dumb idea. That was ridiculous that that's even a thing. Yeah, theory crafters for like you know. Fandoms are just insane. Don't yeah, they know yeah. that like in a lot of movies people's heights are adjusted for the character? So like a film made like forty years ago are really gonna like hold accurate if if the heights are consistent in every shot. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, I, you, I don't you, know. I just remember seeing something like tricks that directors and actors did in like older movies to uh I guess con con Convince the audience that they were taller. Yeah. So a lot I haven't read you guys the second theory as to why bigger Luke is bigger Luke. Oh. It's the Hamill theory, which oh. says that uh, there exists an uncredited Mark Hamill lookalike who was used in certain scenes of the original trilogy for undisclosed reasons and whose identity has yet to be determined. Oh shit. Which means internet sleuths get on it. There's a Mark Hamill twin. Mark Hamill as a twin. It's Jason Hamill. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to think of a good... Ham multiply. Yeah, I was trying to think of a, a good, like, pun. Uh, Alright, can you... You can see what I'm doing. Yeah, let me, oh, yeah, let me, let me hide, hide your guys' layers. Let's hide y'all. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Alright, are you ready? I don't know what I'm going to draw yet, but I'll figure it out. I know exactly what I'm going to draw. I'm gonna have to try hard not to look at Zach's screen since it's like right there. I'm also gonna pull up. I'm gonna say me and you managed to do one in the same room. That's true. We did. I didn't even think about that, but you're right. There is a black dot in my space. I don't know which layer it's on. I'm assuming it's on either one of Ian's uh, or yours, because right, I don't see it. There we go. Okay, cool, thank you. It's so quiet. It's quiet. I'm here. focusing on my drawings. Have you got? Have you got? Have you? Uh, do you have any other games on your docket, Brandon? That you have? Uh... Um, I've started to go back into Minecraft again. Uh, have because been doing that. That updates out. Um, other than that, let's see what else. I I don't know. There's some that I should play. I know I would like. I have like God of War, the last one that I haven't played yet, and it's like one game of the year, and it's like really beautiful and. Yeah, it looks All good. I hear is great stuff, and I just haven't dug in. Um, I believe uh, Cyberpunk got pushed back I believe to so. November now, so that's sad. Hopefully yeah, it lives up to the hype, well. because I'm pretty hyped. It's going to be hard to I like a good. I like a good Cyberpunk. I like the studio, and they make good stuff. I feel like... CD Projekt Red and Rockstar just take turns like 
making the best open world game. <laughs> it's yeah. like it's like boom, Witcher three, and they're like, oh yeah, well boom, Red Dead two, and then now Cyberpunk. I feel like we'll kind of push the bar again. And then and then Bethesda's like Fallout seventy six, and everybody's like. Shut up. <laughs> nah. I am very excited for the new Elder Scrolls, though. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll be amazing. I'm very pumped for that. And they're working on a sci-fi game not that's not, like, Fallout, but, like, a, not, not apocalyptic, but, like, space game they're making right now. Uh, sp- which space game? Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking they're, about. They have a new, a new, a new uh, franchise. Yeah, they were, oh, like, no they're like, we're, we're going to try to spread out than just Fallout and, and Elder Scrolls, so now we're making a space game. And that's basically all they said. They said the title, and there was like a picture of space, and that was about it. But they cool. also said that they're using the same engine as Fallout Four, and everyone was like, "Fuck!" Fuck. I don't know. So they probably are for Elder Scrolls wrong with that engine, too, right? Just, you know, you always want them to upgrade. All right, I need to figure out what I'm drawing here. I uh, shit, what was I playing? I I had a friend give me Dragon Age Inquisition for my birthday. I guess it was like a couple bucks. Oh, cool. Or maybe it's very. Ex- I should see how expensive that gift was, so I know how appreciative it would be. <laughs> if the game is fucking three dollars, you're just not even gonna play it and tell him to go fuck himself. Here's what I think of your fucking free game. <laughs> is that a spit? Did you that do was a spit. A good spit. That was realistic sounding. Thank you. Hold on, wait for it. Pating. Oh. Wow, the spittoon is so He's far got away. Skills. It was very uh, honestly. It's actually it's a bunch of uh, spittoons just stacked around each other because I knew I wasn't gonna like hit it dead on, so I just decided to like, you know even the odds a little bit. I just want to apologize ahead of time for what I'm drawing, guys. Oh, mine, mine is I feel like warrants an apology too, but just because it's dumb. <laughs> I can actually see both of your drawings. What? Ah, shit! It's twenty bucks right now. Zach, wait, Zach, you're supposed to mute, you're supposed to hide your drawings for us. Wait, how am I supposed to hide my drawings for you? No, you're, you're supposed, supposed to, to hide, hide our layers. I, I knew that. I knew that. Hold on. You could have told us before we all started drawing. Well, I wasn't even looking at what you were drawing, so there you go. Know. You seem to have an idea right off the get-go, so it's not like we're going to steal each other's ideas. And no, ultimately, I have it hidden, so for the viewer, they don't know. It's always fun to be like, whoa, at the same time. Well, neither of you are from some, they're all being like, whoa, look at that. But yeah, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition right now is 70, not 70, wow. Uh, $75. I was about to say 76. No, it's, it's 20 though, which is not cheap, so. So it turns um, out he's a good friend after all. Yeah, thanks, Sydney. Uh, she'll be on next week. Or awesome. She's, she, we're trying to get her on. Um, so that would be my thanks, is her being on the show after we already promised to have her on the show. <laughs> That's how you'll thank her, is by giving her a job. <laughs> An unpaid job. Here's work. Yeah. Promote, uh, what's in it for you is some, uh... Free ex- uh, exposure. exposure. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. And that's that's the ultimate reason to do it, as all artists will agree. If you can get some exposure, um, do it. Take the job immediately. Don't even question yeah. it. I mean, just think about all the the you know. It's an investment. You just you gotta give a lot to get a little, and, and just just do it for free. Yeah, you're an artist. Why? What do you care? Yeah, think yeah. about all the money they're gonna make off your hard work, and then think about how in enough time, once you do enough free shit for people, you'll be able to, uh, wait, hold on. Um, We're still figuring out the last part of the equation, but... Just... Yeah, somebody who knows how to budget help me with this. My family is dying. <laughs> <laughs> somebody who's good at the economy. My drawing yeah. is very dumb. <laughs> Mine too. Mine's super dumb. Not that it's a competition, but you know. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, uh, yeah, you sh- you should uh, do things for free for exposure. Because I mean, what? They, you, somebody's supposed to pay you a lot of money just to draw a picture. Yeah, they you could do that. Never ever ever 
value your time. Also, uh, I thought you already liked to draw, so <laughs> clearly yeah, drawing that. something that you didn't want to draw for somebody who is not being very thankful about it is totally like something you're going to enjoy doing anyway. Why don't you just give me, can I get like a family discount? Oh, that was the family discount? Oh, well, <laughs> I need to think about it. I'll get back to you. Yeah. What if I gave you an IOU? I'll do it. Cool. There's that uh four exposure txt uh, Twitter account where they basically post like screenshots people send of people making awful like offers and like asking for free artwork and stuff like that. And uh, oh boy, if you're an artist, don't check those out. Those will make your blood boil. Yeah, no, I actually was just about to say I stopped following them specifically because yeah, it just made me angry. Well, most things make me angry, but you know. Like, yeah, you, you get it. You were uh, pretty angry at Borderlands today when they kept talking. And when well, they the next mission. cool. Ooh. Jesus, yeah. Let the man oh, play the game. That's right. Um, uh, I, so, I, didn't, I don't know if I told you about this, Brandon, but you know that Bloodshot movie with Vin Diesel that came out recently? Yeah. So... Uh, you saw me it, right? And some of the, what was that? You saw it, right? Yeah, we, me and some of the buddies uh, in the Discord, we watched it. And uh, so it here's the interesting thing I didn't know about that movie going into it. But that movie was made by a visual effects company. So, like, they, like, you know how, like, on YouTube, they'll be like, oh, check out our sweet-ass effects reel. Like, and they'll have, like, these crazy special effects and shit like that. Like... The whole movie is basically like one of those groups got the money to just make a movie with Vin oh. Diesel, and huh. so they did that. So like the movie is done. Them a lot of exposure <laughs> though. And like, so so like the movie starts out so confusing. Like the first twenty minutes of the movie are just insanely confusing, and like it all makes sense after a bit. But like, but I don't know. I, I feel like you shouldn't be that confused for the first twenty minutes of a movie before like the reveal happens like you should feel like you're following a plot and then you should feel like the rug has been pulled under you but like this movie was straight up you're just like what the fuck is happening right now why is why is what is how is and then like finally they give you the reveal about i would say 40 minutes into the movie something like that and then the rest of the movie is just dumb seems it's like a bad place joke. to start being like we're effects people making a movie like, shouldn't it be, shouldn't you start with a script and then, not to say that maybe they didn't shop around for a script or something, but it's just like, it's like, were the effects at least good? Yeah. I mean, so here's the weird thing. So like the effects were good, um, but the fight scenes weren't necessarily engaging. Hmm. Uh, I didn't at any point feel like, whoa, um, which ultimately for a fight scenes with like people with robot limbs and shit like that, you want to be able to be like, whoa. Yeah. Um, so yeah, pretty underwhelming fight scenes. Um, and also, it's so, like the one fight scene in the beginning is Vin Diesel's got like these dudes cordoned off in like a, a tunnel, and then I guess like a flower truck spilt over or something like that. So Vin Diesel's just like fucking these dudes up in slow motion in like a tunnel that's full of flowers. So like people get punched in the face and then like flower. Everywhere. Oh, I was expecting. I was picturing like the plant, but that makes oh, sense. Oh no, like the white powder. Got it. Uh, it might have been snow, but I'm pretty sure it was flour because it makes no sense for that shit to be snow. So, like, that looks visually interesting and all of that stuff, but, um, it, it's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like, why is there a bunch of flour? And that's it. Like, otherwise, yeah. it's, just, it's, just a, it's just a dumb movie. Um, it's not even, like, bad enough to be like, you should watch this. It's so dumb. Yeah. Uh, it's just, like, boring bad. Well, that's unfortunate. I mean, oh, yeah, I ultimately, I wasn't going to watch it anyway, so I guess it's oh, not, yeah. not we... that big of a loss to find that out. Yeah. I'm all finished, by the way. I finished my entry. I oh. guess I can just add. I'm almost done. Oh. Yeah, I'm almost done, too. But yeah, so Bloodshot, um, rush to theaters to see it. Just sprint. I think theaters are closed. That's exactly. Um, so if you want to see uh, <laughs> Bloodshot... That's why they closed yeah, theaters, theater. right? Is because Bloodshot wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's weird to like 
Vin Diesel based that off of the D&D character. No, that's Chronicles of Riddick. Oh. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I I am so, super excited to see that new Fast and the Furious movie, though. That'll be a blast. Not in theaters. Last movie we saw in theaters before the pandemic, Parasite. I think, I think that was the last thing I saw. Yeah, it would have been. Oh, there. I don't know if you know this, but my car, it, it races real fast. Um... I need y'all to make my car just, race a little faster than it races already. He just talks so unegregiously, like, unclear. And never once are they like, let's take that again. It is this, it's so much worse like that in Bloodshot, too. Like, straight up, I, I could swear that in some scenes. I'm like, did Vin Diesel just, like, have a clause in his contract where he couldn't do reshoots? Like, he has the one-take Jake contract or something like that? Jake from State Farm? Yes, one take Jake from State Farm. Okay. Alright, yeah, I'm almost done. Give me uh, a few more minutes, guys. Okay. Alrighty. Zone Dog says it was made for $45 million and they think that was more the point. Oh, yeah, that they, they did also, like, cut budget, like, way hard in that film. Forty-five million is cutting budget. Yeah, I don't even know what a movie costs anymore. I have no idea. <laughs> um, so how many movies it, can you afford to make? Like, I feel like so like basically like I don't know how Zone Dog, which is uh like I don't want to dock people in the chat, but he's been on the show before. Um, nice. But how much does a movie usually go for? Because I know it's like. I feel like the average is a hundred thousand, is generally what you get in like a big budget movie or like a, a standard budget movie nowadays. But it is considered, like, like indie movies get maybe like twenty million. Honestly. Furious Seven was one hundred and ninety million. So Furious Seven was one ninety. That's um, Bloodshot forty five that, million. That is, I don't know. I don't I have nothing to say about that. Astronomically high. <laughs> yeah, that that's what, there's the word. so fucking much money. I mean, yeah, it makes some sense, but like, I bet you it's super inflated for the actors. Well, it's inflated for the actors. I mean, a lot of that goes into budget, like marketing and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure. Um, Do I hate capitalism? Hold on, let me look up the budget for Marvel Endgame. Oh my god, I can't even imagine. Uh, three hundred and fifty-six million. Gee, mini Christmas. Three hundred and fifty-six million. Yeah. Uh, how is how is that a third of a billion dollars to make a movie? A movie Disney about is. people in tights fighting aliens, featuring Paul Rudd. And, and you know what? Movie. Like, I do not care about any of the Marvel Universe movies right now. It's like I've seen some of them. I just don't care. Like, I saw the first Avengers. I still need to see the other two. If I you, just don't care. If you're able to to watch, like, I don't know how many there are now, but, like, 150 movies about the same thing and still care, yeah. you are a more resilient man than I. <laughs> I just, yeah, I have no desire to watch so it's many like, I've seen this movies. one. You made this one already. A yeah. hundred times. This one has Paul Rudd too. <laughs> They're, every single one of them have their own individual movie where they chase after a glowing rock of some sort, and now they're all together to chase after another glowing rock. All the glowing rocks they've collected. I Ugh. will say this though, I, uh, I, in terms of like the comics and everything like that, I was a huge fan of. Uh, Thanos fan. Yeah. And uh, when they revealed him at the end of the very first Avengers, I like audibly squeed yeah. in the middle of the theater. So I had, I had also been a fan of Thanos, and I. Were you also, a Thanos? I was a Thanos. You yeah. were the Thanos. Uh, we we like to be called fan heads. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> uh, I have a brother-in-law who is 
way more into comics than I am, and he kind of early on, like as soon as like I don't know what the first movie that they're after, like a rock is like the Thor or something. I don't yeah. know. I don't remember which, but he yeah, he had already put it together what they were doing, and they were probably pretty open about it because they're like, here's the movies we're making for the next thirty years and what what day yeah. they're coming out. But uh, he had known that it was going to be a Infinity Gauntlet story, which I had already read the comic. I just hadn't pieced together that's what they were trying to build. Yeah, right off the bat. I remember but, uh, being in. Oh, sorry. Was no, that was it. That was the end of the thought. Okay, I remember being in theaters uh, with my buddies watching the first Avengers, like opening night. And uh, they do that reveal where Thanos is, like, revealed. And then, like, I hear the whole uh, theater going, like, ah! I just kind of lean into my buddy and I go, who's that? <laughs> That's Grimace. They were introduced in the McDonald's <laughs> cinematic I was year. just like, who's this Grimace-looking motherfucker right here with, like, like chin? Like, who's this Super Scroll-ass-looking dude, man? Like, he does have a Super Scroll uh, he, chin, doesn't he? Has he does. a, his head is like a thumb. Yeah, a purple. Yeah, thumb. he does look like a fucking shell. Guy, he, that's not nice to say about Josh Brolin. I agree with Zone Dog though. He was cool in the movies. I, I, I liked him. And cool. as much as I'm like got, I'll call it Marvel fatigue. Uh, I every once in a while one of them is still fun. I, I yeah. I, I don't hate them all. I just I can't bring myself to get excited, and I end up watching them like years after they come out, just because I'm like. I'll get around to it. I can't be hype about this anymore. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, yeah, that's kind of where I am. A new one comes out every like two a month. Like, how am I supposed to care that much? I can't. Yeah, I, it's too much. Like, especially like during like when they were really rolling with like those movies, I felt like it was like four movies a year that they were just yeah. like check it out. They were. I was like, oh my god, dude. It's like I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> I still really like Spider-Man Far From Home, though. I thought that was really I still haven't watched that one, but I love Homecoming. Homecoming. I haven't seen Homecoming. Yeah. Homecoming was good. Homecoming was good. I haven't watched Far From Home. I want to. And then also, uh, mm-hmm. I know this isn't in, like, the same universe or whatever, but but uh, Enter the Spider-Verse was great, I thought. Oh, yeah, I still need to see that one, too. Just watch it. The animation's really good, too. It's cool, like, yeah. so amalgamation of comic. Far From Home. Sorry. I was just saying, it's cool how they kind of, like, yeah, they kind of do, like, a combination of, like, film, and, like, they also try to, like, incorporate the fact that it's from comics, so they'll, like, do these cool, like, transitions and stuff with the animation. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Oh, Into the Spider-Verse? Yeah. I thought it was great. I yeah, a lot of cool stuff they've done with, like, Bende Dots and things like that, too. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. They did do that. All right, what were you saying? I, uh, I was just gonna say, <clears throat> seeing Spider-Man Far From Home was funny, because, like, I, I got evicted, like, three days before I saw that movie, so, like... I, mean, I was evicted, and then I was living on my friend's couch, and then the one night he was just like, hey, do you want to see Spider-Man? And I was just like, I'm fucking homeless, man. Like, what else am I doing right now? So, yeah, I want to see Spider-Man. Yeah, like, God, you were Don't ask. Homeless. Just God, take so me homeless. to the movie. Stop asking if I want to see it. Yeah, like, I'm living on your couch. Like, Do they have seats at the theater? Great, let's go, because I, <laughs> I don't have any. Yeah. Is there a oh, roof? Oh, do they have food? Oh, great, good. <laughs> Over there. All right, how are your drawings coming along? I am coloring and finishing up. I am all done. Okay. Oh, our brand, are you all done? I just finished, yes. Just finished. I am just finishing coloring up, and it'll be... I, I have, like, no background either. I just That's have fine. My Neither do I. Yeah, I'm just doing goofy shit now to, like, pad out time. You're doing it on his side. I'm hustling. I'm hustling. I'm hustling. No need to hustle. You're good. Yeah. Although the show does end in five minutes, and I will, tr- I will pull the plug before we reveal your drawing if it's not done in time. Goddamn right. I or if it's like about. I operate a tight like ship that. here. I just guarantee you're gonna be like, really, Zach? Could you that for the redundant clone? Oh dear. I think we're probably all gonna be competing for the dumbest thing made. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Mine's not. Mine's dumb, but it's not even original. <laughs> I'm just like I, I just wanted to draw it when you said you're done clones, so that's where I am on right. this. Well, I'm very curious to see uh, what you could possibly be ashamed of because <laughs> I have yet to find it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't get ashamed often, and this is something I'm very ashamed. I, of. My my uh, scientific paper was approved. Researching you, <laughs> it seems that there's nothing. There's no. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> there's no ceiling to this. There's where, no shame. Where is the shame? Alright. 
Alright. I'm ready, guys. All right. Whenever you are. I'm gonna reveal if you're all ready. Uh, give me a sec. Oh, God. The right opacity. Okay, I'm ready. I started through. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like all these drawings. <laughs> Audi E. <laughs> Truly the most redundant clone. Which one's the real one? Uh, the any. You're, okay. You're an any, huh? Yeah. Mr. Potato Head! <laughs> <laughs> that is terrifying. <laughs> I just didn't. You can still adjust the pieces on his head. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Take his shoes off, put them back on. <laughs> he has a compartment that. in the back, it's great. <laughs> I know. I think the most ah. disturbing fact is that he has legs ah. now. Yeah. <laughs> he's not just a different, he's not just a clone, he's a better version. Yeah, he's, <laughs> uh, he's the evolved version. It's kind of like how, you know, if you go far enough back, we all, we all came from worms. <laughs> We all came from worms in the primordial stew. Yeah, Mr. Potato Head's just a protozoa version of Mr. Potato Hands. Right. Well, so it turns out... Well, I guess he had fingers, though, the original model. I'm now remembering. He did, yeah. So maybe this isn't Please. the most... Maybe it's like how, you know, some of our ape relatives have, like, hands for feet or tails that they can grab stuff with that we, that we lost. You know, sometimes you lose some... some uh, Abilities in the process. Yeah, like we don't even need our appendix anymore. What the fuck? Yeah, what's that about, man? Shit. Get and, out of there. How awesome right? would it be if our feet were as useful as our hands? I'm gonna start eating stones just to make my appendix work. Wait, it's not a gizzard. No, it? it's not. Okay, never mind. I'm not gonna eat stones. Yeah, I would make sure you. I'll keep them away from the rock pile. Okay. Just. Well. What if you eat a few stones, though? Well, I mean. Don't just wow. totally kill that whole idea. I mean, you might. Yeah, I'm gonna might not be. Yeah, How right. will let's you know until? You... Let's let's try it first before we know that it's not a worthwhile pursuit. Okay. Doctor, hey, I feel terrible. Moron, people. <laughs> doctor, later. doctor, I feel terrible. Are you still eating stones? Well, well yeah. Thought we talked about this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> doctor, it hurts when I do this. Well, don't do that. Yeah. But I. Okay, well, how else can we get to the goal of me feeling better without stopping eating stones? It hurts to poop, Doc. <laughs> I think you should stop eating stones. Alright, I need a second opinion. Is that it? <laughs> I did not get the, the answer I wanted from you. I'm moving on to another doctor. Yeah, second opinion. I'm gonna get kidney stones, I'm gonna get anal stones, I'm gonna get throat yeah. stones, and belly stones. <laughs> anal stones is... I just hated that. A terrible <laughs> phrase. <laughs> Anal stone. Yeah, that does sound bad, doesn't it? That sounds like a hemorrhoid that got really hard and just whoop, fell off. Oh, I don't like that either. You found another yeah, bad sentence. Know. Stop saying horrible things. Because yeah, hemorrhoids are just a vein. Anyway, All right. You just, every enjoy. sentence is worse than the last one. <laughs> yeah, this one is really going down. <laughs> that's true. I'm like, that's the most uncomfortable thing I've ever heard. And then you say it as something else. And I'm like, never mind. Scratch that. I mean, I could just keep going. I, I, I don't doubt it. Going downhill. <laughs> and on that note, we're at the end of the show. Hey. hey. Guys, thanks. thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for being on. Yeah, thanks for being two feet away. <laughs> Absolutely. we'll have you back that's for sure and also thank you yes. to our viewers thank you for the generous birthday donation yeah seriously Woo! what the hell you great. know this show is possible because of viewers like you um, we're great. still that here in the chat. on the phones awesome. calling out getting those donations that's right it's a telethon you if you donate over there. if you donate a thousand dollars you will get the draw bomb tote bag I repeat you will get the draw bomb tote bag for only a thousand dollars and you'll get to continue to enjoy this wonderful programming brought to you because of generous donations like that. That is correct. Um, it, the tote bag, when you get it, uh, sorry about the blood, I had to stow it myself. Um, yeah, the tote bag is filled, stupid fingers. filled with blood. Now, first off, that may seem like a negative, but just think about how, how uh, great of a bag this must be that it can hold blood. Seriously. Well, Ian is O positive. Too, the stitching. So oh, good. I hear that. Is it uh, the universal O negative or 
Oh, negative is the universal, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so speaking of negative... I've been reading that if you are if you have O blood type, you are less uh, less likely to catch COVID. Is that true? That's supposedly true, unless it turns out to be bullshit. But as of now, I that's mean, what they seem to be... <laughs> like as of now, you're, that's the word on the street. I've been right. injecting bleach so <laughs> But they say, like, I mean, you know, with a, a brand new virus, things tend to change as they figure it out. But it seems like they've been saying that people, at least the trend is that people with O positive, or not O positive, but just O blood type is less able to catch it. So, hmm. congratulations. Me, on the other hand, doomed. Oh, I actually, I don't know my blood type. Oh, I thought you were saying that you were O. Gotcha. No, I was just kidding. I wouldn't, I don't even know my own blood type uh, either. I, I, I I would be offended if you doxed my blood type on the on the show. <laughs> all the all the banks are gonna be oh, after no. me for my we would be sweet canceled. sweet now old have a blood. Whole bunch of matches. <laughs> Dang it! I'm gonna take my kidney. Yeah, it doesn't. It, and I I looked at my driver's license in case it told you your blood type yeah. there. I, it does not, but I do know that I'm a blood an organ donor. So yes. Yes. I, I I I knew my blood type once, but I don't remember it. I don't know. I'm like, I've so, asked my doctor like occasionally, been like, "Hey, basic. can you give me like the follow up? Can you give me my blood type on the report?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure." And then I'm like, it never happens. If you donate blood, they'll tell you. That's yeah, it's a good way to and help by out. The way, to anybody who ever gets my liver in the future, good luck. It's got a few miles on it. It's like when you buy a, a car for like a thousand bucks and you're like, it's already got like 200,000 miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a hoopty liver. Like, well, this might get me to work a few times. <laughs> and then I will die. You gotta pull the ripcord a couple times to really get it going, but once you got it there. <laughs> I, quick, I know that's the end of the, end of the story, but or end of the show, but I have one quick story about a truck that I once owned so my first vehicle was a, this truck and it was when I got it it was already like 150 mile a thousand miles or no it was more it was like 200 and it was like it was a 1990 so it was old, as old as I am um, and uh, yeah so anyways I just drove it I was, my plan was to drive it until it died because what, what like what's the blue book value on that <laughs> like it's like you, they have you have to pay them to take it I think at that point um, so, yeah, I, think so yeah. I drove it for a long time when I finally got a new car there was so much wrong with it and I, I went on Craigslist and I, I sold it for I think like 600 bucks which is actually pretty good being I bought it for like a thousand like 1100 or something and drove it for many years anyways yeah, it's not bad. when the guy when the guy came to pick it up I sold it like the same day I put it up but when the guy came to pick it up <laughs> you could tell that it was like I need wheels and an engine that works for something that's it's <laughs> urgent so i'm buying a 600 hundred dollar shitty truck off craigslist <laughs> and i being like i didn't want to like scam anybody or anything so i went through down the line of all the stuff wrong with it just so he would have a full picture painted because I, I personally felt a little guilty selling this truck and i'm like okay so i'm like a couple thousand miles short of three hundred thousand um, the Damn. the back window doesn't lock. The radio does not work. Um, there's no air conditioning. Uh, it doesn't go. If if you want to put it into reverse, you have to turn off the ignition first. <laughs> that was some of the many things, and the guy's just like, oh, okay, I'll still take it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But uh, you know, that guy, that guy was in a he, he, he must have been in a, rough was in a tight spot. spot. He needed that truck. Hopefully, it ran for a while for him. But uh, yeah, I told him everything, and he still bought it. So. Well, that's good on you for uh, being honest. Yeah, I'm glad you're I the would, kind I of would, person to do that sort of thing. Because I, I probably would have lied. To <laughs> this thing runs amazing. It's great. Uh, my cousin just opened up, cracked open the uh, the mile gauge, and he just spun it up. So technically, there's only like twenty thousand miles. Yeah, there. it's it actually just was driven off the lot. That's the only thing yeah. that's, that's been done. The radio yeah, works really good. How much value? The only thing that works better than the radio is the air conditioning. Yeah, and definitely the transmission, perfect. It's great. Works perfect. <laughs> definitely not gonna have to replace that once in a while. No. Could you imagine if like you you say all that stuff to that guy and he's just like, okay, but like, can I still put my dick in the tailpipe? Uh, <laughs> I can. Okay, cool. That's it's sold. Once the title's in your hand, feel free. Yeah. 
What can I say? I like to fuck cars. I'm not gonna yuck that yum, but nope. you know, you might burn <laughs> yourself. So be careful. Yucky. <laughs> That's one <laughs> yucky <laughs> yum, if you ask me. All right. That is one <laughs> yucky yum. <laughs> hey, it's not yucky. It's just covered in oil. Good night, everybody. Uh, good night. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna Alrighty, play us out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like each week you're getting more accurate. Very close, but not exactly yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll get it one of these times it's funny you varied throughout some points you were ahead of it other times you were behind <laughs> I, need to, I need to bring a metronome the one you day. do have that running <laughs> just practice uh, a bunch hey before guys, a show thank you very much for having me on as a guest that thank you very time. much for being on yeah that was thank good you. times all right adios